Hey guys, it's Googly again with another video and uh, this time I've got an introduction to an application which I think is one of the most crucial application if you are someone like me who flashes uh, ROMs a lot and wants to move between Oxygen OS and a custom ROM. So let's get started. The topic of this video is that if you are familiar with the custom roaming scene, it's not the most usual or it's not the most easiest way to move from one ROM to the other. If you are on a custom ROM, if you want to go to an Oxygen OS ROM, you will have to wipe your entire data. So making a backup at that exact moment is not ideal. So what you can do, there is a method which I have been using for a long time now to make periodic backup of your internal data to your computer or to a, any other of your devices to safeguard that data against accidental deletion. The application which I use for it is called SyncThing and I'm going to introduce you guys to SyncThing now. This is a purely open source program which has a lot of features it works really well it works on all of these systems it has linux system uh, windows mac os freebsd solaris all of that it works i have used this on ubuntu worked really well and i'm going to show you guys how to set up a basic backup server uh, configuration which i use to just make a backup of everything let's get started first things first you will need to get sync thing from SyncThing.net, you will have to get the application. Now, if you're on a Windows system, I'm going to show you guys how to do it on a Windows system because that is what most people use. If you are on Linux, you can go to the Linux page and get the tar.gz file, install that. There's also a command line installation, which is really easy. It is mostly a web UI application, but I use the Sync Tracer application on Windows to get it working because it is super simple. It works really well for most issues, so I'm really happy with that. So depending on your system, it should probably bc x64 if it is not if it's x86 get that one I've, I've already downloaded my x64 version install that simple installation double click click next and then you will be on here so this is the application which is here double clicking the application will open up the sync tracer application or the web ui now you can see that my device is called asgard which is the computer which i'm using it on now the version is 1.1.4 i have to note that uh, the version when i install all this uh, application was 1.1.1 you have to upgrade it there will be a tab here called upgrade now you just have to click it and it will just do it automatically now let me show you guys what to do on your computer to get this working go to play store and get sync thing and get this application ready so this is the one which is available sync thing community sync thing i've already installed this let's open the system also now you will be greeted with the welcome to sync thing for android page continue you will have to grant permission that is just your sd card needs to be permitted location permission is not necessary so i'm not going to do that and it will now generate the uh, stuff available battery optimization can be enabled camera is the basic or the default folder which is enabled already so i'm just going to delete that i'm going to show you guys how to do it for the other folders also here it is this is the same thing application this is the same thing application on the computer also let's just show you guys how to do this now my configuration involves uh files from my phone being synced to the computer and all the changes from the phone to be changed on the uh, on the computer but no changes on the computer to be changed on the phone so what I do is I keep send only on the phone and receive only on the computer. I'll show you guys how to do that. First of all, you'll have to add the device. Now, what I do is I just click here and show device ID. Now, you know, this is the device ID. It is uh, EDT6B, whatever it is. I know it starts with E and it is ED something. Now, I'll click on add remote device. Now, if you don't have any other device connected, you will only see that device ID. So you just have to click on that give the device a name i'm gonna give it as time uh, two now, i'm not going to go into sharing options and advanced option because I, this is just meant to be an introduction press save and it is now enabled now you will have this connected it is unused because you have not assigned any folder for it now what you have to do is wait for the phone to pick up the sync thing folder or the device remote devices which has been created and uh, it will show you a request for connecting to your phone also if you're not getting it just go here restart and uh, after that you should be having that 
so now we have the device uh, as God it wants to connect as God being my PC it wants to connect to my phone so click on that it will show you guys the device ID just to check here is the device ID and you will have the device ID here you can also use a QR code to get it done uh, if you click on here you can do that now apart from that as God dynamic compress all of that is available you can just have it click on tick mark and now the device is added so it is now connected to your PC now it is important for your devices both your devices to be connected to the same network in the house uh, I guess that goes without saying it doesn't necessarily have to be connected uh, to the same network uh, I guess hotspot right now my PC is connected to the uh, 2.5 gigahertz connection but my phone is connected to the uh, 5 gigahertz connection it can be like that also the only problem will be that the transfers will be a bit slower depending on the bandwidth available anyways now that we have both of them connected what now we have to do is add a folder to your phone and that is how you get started to add new folders click on the plus sign on the folders menu and then give a name for the folder I'm going to give it uh, alpine2 and select the directory which you need now the directory can be anything you want what I do to keep a full backup of everything is click on the oneplus 60 that is my entire storage you can use that and click select there i don't want to make a full backup of everything now so i'm just going to show you guys how to do it with my dcim or camera package let's select this restored one it has my photograph and a video so select that it's going to just sync the restored folder now the next thing which you need to enable is for asgard if you have multiple uh, devices you can actually select it for uh, the other devices also if you have a main server if you have a different computer elsewhere you can also connect it to that which is really cool so with that done the next step is to select a folder type that depends on what you want to do now for my usage I want all the new files or folders inside my phone to be replicated on my computer but none of the stuff from the computer to be sent over to the phone so that is what I want to do so I can select the send only option on my phone so that way it will only send the files which is available on my phone to the computer and never receive anything unless I select it otherwise you can also use a uh, send and receive if you want a one-on-one -on -one recreation on your computer and your phone but do keep in mind that I have had this issue where my phone was wiped and I had nothing in the internal storage of my phone I restored a backup from the sync thing libraries so it still had sync send and receive folder type for the entire internal storage and it just deleted everything on my computer also so keep that in mind for safety sakes I just keep it as send only so it's only going to send the files from my phone to the computer so that's one thing something else which I do is uh, file full order I knew I keep it at oldest first so that Whenever there is a new file created on my computer, it still follows the uh, recent file structure. I like that. I just keep that uh, enabled. So that's pretty much it. Now after that, you just need to click on the tick button and a folder is now created. The device will be disconnected just uh, for the time being. It will take some time for the folder to be recognized by my computer now. So we'll wait for that. So a new folder has been detected uh, from my computer because that is because I have already selected Asgard as a receiver for this one. So after which you can add the file here. So adding the file will uh, give you a folder path where you want to save it. I want to save it to, I don't know, I'll just select, make a folder here which is called uh, Alphime. And I want to save uh, all the files which is available there to this one. I'm just gonna copy that. As you can see, there's nothing here. And uh, copy it, paste it, and this is gonna happen. Now what I want to show you guys is file versioning. Why file versioning? File versioning is, if you have selected the way I have done it, with advanced being uh, only receive, I'm going to select receive only because I only want the computer to receive files and not send anything unless I want it to. So files are synchronized from the cluster but any change made locally on the computer will not be sent to the device. Exactly what I want. So we have basically everything set up. The folder ID is the same. So you will get that sharing options here to, with my device. Now file versioning. File versioning is another thing which I do personally on my devices. The way it works is because I have selected send only and receive only. Whenever my phone has something delayed 
complicated because I change stuff uh, all the time. Uh, maybe from from the computer, from the camera files. I won't. I don't. I didn't like a photograph which I de I deleted. I don't want that to be kept in the computer in the same folder directory. But I don't want that to be deleted if there is an accidental deletion which happened with my phone. I don't want that accidental deletion to be uh, replicated on my computer also. So for that, what I do is I use trash can file versioning. There is also other types of file versioning where it will keep five versions of the file also staggered file versioning which is age based uh, external file versioning which is different you can have a command for that I'm not monster enough to do that what I do is trash can file versioning for zero days zero means it will be kept forever it will never delete the file with trash can file versioning what happens is it will create a different folder called SC versions and whenever a file is deleted from the phone it will move the deleted file from the computer's directory to the ST version files maintaining the directory I'll show you guys what it means because it's a bit difficult to tell you guys that so uh, I've selected trash can file versioning with zero days and uh, now advanced uh, general everything is set up now I'm gonna save it now with that my folder is enabled now it is going to sync everything which is available here so uh, let's just see that so it is now syncing we'll wait for it to sync and it has been synced it is only 17 megabytes it's a very small file but if you are syncing your entire device or entire internal storage it's gonna take some time that's just how it goes but for the most part this is how it goes now as i've already said you can actually open the file folder and see what all is available as you can see this is alfheim 2 your um the the file which is the dcim has been backed up here which does work out so as you can see my collage and also the video is available now what i want to show you guys is how the uh, file versioning works now on the system i go to the folder which is uh, this one i can just click that now i want to delete this file click on delete and confirm now that photograph has been deleted from my phone so what happens is uh if everything goes well it will be synced yeah as you can see it has been deleted uh, and uh, what happens now is go to file folder now as you can see it has been deleted from the folder that's fine but it goes to st versions and it is still there so you will never lose a file which is really really important and really really cool so that is how I do it. It is really simple to be extremely honest, but it does require you to do things in order, uh, the order which I've shown you guys to get it working correctly. So that is one thing. Now you have everything backed up. You have been doing this for a while now and uh, one day you try to flash a new ROM. You go, try going back to OS and uh, well, it just doesn't, I mean, your uh, internal storage is wiped what now now what you need to do is what i do personally is make a setting uh, in the settings you have a backup option i export my configuration files and keep it in the system i copy that into my computer somewhere safe so that in the event that my internal storage is wiped out i won't wipe out my backup file also you can restore it somewhere later now you have already wiped up your internal storage now you need to restore stuff go back go to your uh, file folder stuff and uh, then what you need to do is go uh, copy the files the backups are inside this one same thing you need all of these files which you can back up you just need to copy paste it back to this folder to get all the file structures which you have created to work correctly so now you have that Import the file systems from uh, SyncThing now uh, by going to settings, backup and import configuration. After you have imported your configuration, you will be greeted with this screen. Now after which, what you need to do is click on the uh, folder which you need to restore. Click on the folder type, click on receive only. By clicking on receive only, you are basically making it that uh, your phone will only receive from the computer. If you select receive and send, there are chances that your phone will delete the files inside your computer, the backed up files also. So don't do that. Click on receive only. Now come back to the computer and click on the edit button advanced. Click on send only. By sending only, now what happens is it is going to just send whatever is inside this folder apart from all these hidden files. So ST versions will not be sent, which is really cool. So anything you deleted on your phone will not be sent back for you to deal with again. So that's also really cool. I like that. And uh, yeah, it will now send everything which is backed up to your computer and uh, it will just work. That is 
pretty much what I wanted to talk about with sync thing. It works really well. The sync thing application also has options where you can select the run conditions, where you can select it only runs on specific Wi-Fi networks, or you can also select it for running with AC power only, battery power only. I've noticed that this these are a little bit finicky, so I would suggest you use something like a Google Assistant command. Right now, I have a command which says, okay, Google, run sync thing so i do have a command run for sync thing which i do every night this is something you will have to do manually or if you have a tasker if you use tasker you can actually automate the task whenever you're charging and all that that is a very small introduction to sync thing and if you notice there are a lot of features with sync thing you have a lot of options you can have ignored folders ignored files all of that can be customized to your hot content and uh, something which i am planning to do is not use my computer uh, to make the backups i'm going to use a raspberry pi to make all the backups so that i don't have to have a computer uh, online at all times it is disconnected from the cloud so you will not have any issues with the leakage and all that so it is just simple quick and uh, in my opinion it's very easy so you can pretty much not be worried about your internal data to be lost anytime when you try and flash a new ROM. So guys, there you have it. Hope you guys liked the video. Hope you guys understood what I was uh, trying to say. If you didn't, do let me know in the comment section below. You can ask the questions. You can ask whatever you want so that I may be able to help you guys. So yeah, that has been the introduction to same thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So see you guys later. Bye.